I created this training program for equity real estate. Oh, it's been 10 or 11 years. And I wanted to give you guys something of quality that you could access every single week to have just a little tip to keep polishing your game, uh, keep getting just a little bit better week after week. I hope you can continue to join me each week. I know everybody's very busy, and I appreciate your time today, and I hope this is a valuable use of your time. If you're unable to attend or you need to leave partway through or something, you can access this later on on my YouTube channel. Just type in Elite Agent Training, all is one word, and you can access it there. If you have other things you would like to see training on, um, feedback, success stories, something like that, please shoot me an email at brokerericlee at gmail.com. All right, each week we have a little bit of a homework assignment. The idea here is that if I dumped everything on you in like a big three-day seminar or something, that would be fun for all of us, but we wouldn't apply very much. In fact, studies show after those big seminars, people typically apply about 4% of what they've learned. All those great ideas, and we apply only 4%. And we wonder why there's such a high dropout ratio in this business. I wanted to build my training a little bit differently, give you bite-sized pieces that you can take and actually do something with every single week. So hopefully last week you got your buyer presentation sharpened up, you got everything, you know, exclusive buyer broker agreements signed with all of your clients so that we can move ahead really well here. Our deep thought for the day that we're starting with is one person sees a rock pile, another sees a great cathedral. The difference? Vision. I don't know who that thought comes from, but it's going to apply to us today with what we're talking about. Pipeline is a concept that everybody uses and we all have a pretty good understanding of what it is. You've got to consistently have people moving through your pipeline. That means new people you're starting with, people that you're in process with shopping for homes or under contract, and then people at the closing stage. However, I wanted to compare this a, a little bit differently than a pipe because I've never worked on a pipeline, maybe some of you have, but we've all ridden a bicycle. So I've got my bicycle comparison up here on the screen. First of all is your frame. This is the most important part of your real estate pipeline. Sorry, I've got a question typed in here. Oh, the website to rewatch it again, I can. It is. You go to YouTube and you type in Elite Agent Training, all is one word. Elite Agent Training. Let me see if I can. So, good question. All right. Um, so, back to this. With our frame, the most important thing is our business habits. That's the frame of everything that we do. For the last six or seven weeks, that's all we've been focusing on. I know some agents are probably chomping at the bit saying, I want to get out and talk to people. I want to generate leads and get business. The problem is, let's say that you don't have a good contact management software set up. So you're generating leads, but then they fall through the cracks. Because we're all distracted, we're busy, there's kids, there's uh, our own social lives, there's clients that are, <clears throat> that are overly demanding. And they pull us in a lot of different directions. And so if we don't have tools set up to make sure that we're doing a good job for everybody, then we either lose information, we forget to return phone calls, maybe we're returning calls at all hours of the day and night because we haven't set professional hours for ourselves. Uh, maybe we don't have a buyer's presentation ready. Maybe you didn't do the homework from last week, so you're sitting there thinking, uh, maybe I didn't really need that right now. You do. Everything that we're going to do moving forward, you need to have those things in place ready to go. That's your whole frame. And if you go shopping for bicycles, you can get a bike for 100 bucks at Walmart. You can go spend $10,000 on a pedal bike. And the primary difference between these things, between the $100 bike and a $10,000 bike, is the frame and the components. And the primary difference between an agent who's making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and an agent who's limping along $40,000 a year is their business habits. If you have good business habits, if you start work at a certain time and end work at a certain time, 
All of those things that we've talked about over the last few weeks. You've got a listing presentation you can deliver in an hour, a buyer presentation in 30 minutes, a for sale by, present, for sale by owner presentation in 20 minutes. You have all of these things in your arsenal, ready to go, polished up, then you've got a strong frame and we can build that pipeline up. If you don't, you've got leaks all over and it doesn't matter how much stuff you push in there, you're going to have a frustrating result. All right, the front wheel of the bicycle represents our new business. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason why I want this as the front wheel is because this is where our focus is. When we ride a bike, we always keep our focus moving forward. I don't know if you've ever tried to ride a bike. It, you know, sometimes you go mountain biking in the canyon and there's just some beautiful scenery all around you. And so you turn your head and you're looking around and almost inevitably you ride right off the trail. Okay, and hopefully <laughs> it's not a cliff. Um, but that happens a lot in real estate. We get distracted. Like I said, we have maybe a client that's very needy. And so we take our eye off of the new wheel business and we start focusing on that one client because we don't have a framework to take care of him. We don't have systems set up that ensures that they get constant communication because if we're not constantly communicating with our clients, they do become needy, okay? And rightfully so. They have needs that you're not fulfilling. But if you've got a framework of, you know, every Friday I talk to them at this time, I give them an update on all of this. Every Monday I send them a summary of where we're at in the process. You know, if you have those things set up, then you don't have to worry about those people. However, if you don't have a good frame, then those things distract us and inevitably that carries us off the trail. So we've got to keep our focus on the front wheel, which is acquiring new business. It is inevitable that clients will fall through, the deals will crash and burn. That's just part of this business. Um, buyers will go out and do dumb things no matter how much you coach them or prepare them. Somebody will go out and buy a brand new truck the week he's supposed to close. Um, sometimes they lose their job. I've had that happen a week before closing. Sometimes a couple days before closing. That kind of thing's happening. Those kinds of things happen. They can be very discouraging if you don't have a constant focus on acquiring new business. If I just signed on a new client yesterday and I lost one today, it's not quite as crushing to me because I know that I'm still going to be able to pay the bills in a consistent fashion. Okay? Our rear wheel is our closings. If we've got constant focus on new business and we have a frame that guarantees all of our clients get the very best treatment, then we don't have to focus on our rear wheel at all. However, if you notice here on uh, the bicycle's legs, everything that he does is directing energy towards that rear wheel. All of our efforts are generating energy towards closings, okay? But we don't have to put our focus there. Our focus is eyes forward, acquiring the new business. Now, as fun as mountain biking is, I used to mountain bike quite a bit more back in my college days. I grew up in northern Utah. We had mountains close by. Access to them was very easy. And we'd get out there a lot. We had a great time. However, there were a couple instances where we maybe got a little bit too excited, um, maybe got a little, going a little bit too fast, and chains come off, rims break, you know, tires pop, that kind of, things hap that kind of thing happens. And so we don't necessarily want our real estate business fraught with peril at every turn. That might be exciting for a, a day out with some buddies, but when we're talking about paying bills, we don't necessarily want a, the potential to crash and burn just around the next bend. So I'm going to encourage you today with some of your habits to take your bike and put it on a track. Yes, it can seem a little bit monotonous at times because we're going around and around familiar territory. But it also makes it easier. It guarantees that we have consistent paychecks coming in because we're doing the right things every day. Now if you want to do the right things some days and then do the wrong things other days or just flat out not work on other days like many people do, your life's going to be more exciting. You know, one day you might sit, be sitting there wondering, I have no idea how we're going to pay the bills this month. Okay, I would encourage you not to have that kind of excitement. Let's make it a little bit boring. Let's start doing the right things every single day consistently. 
So there's a story of bucket hauling versus pipeline, and I have to mention this here because all of us at some point or another are bucket haulers as well. Okay? The little story that I like to tell comes from a book like Rich Dad Poor Dad or something like that. One of those books, I can't ever remember, but it tells this story of this little, I imagine, an African village that's about a half mile away from their nearest water source. Everybody get up, gets up in the morning, grabs their bucket, goes and gets water. These two entrepreneurial young men decide, you know what, we're young, we're strong, we're healthy, let's go ahead and get water for our neighbors and we'll charge them a little bit. We'll make a business out of it. And so they start offering this service and sure enough, they get some good business. A lot of people are interested. So they've got their bucket hauling business. And they're hauling buckets all day long, they're making good money and they're happy. But friend B, I'll just call them friend A and friend B. Friend B says, you know what, there's got to be something better. I can't imagine everybody in the world does this. So he says to friend A, I'm going to go out in the world, I'm going to see what other people do. Friend A says, you're crazy, you've got a good life hauling buckets. Friend B goes out and he sees that other cities have built pipelines and how they work and how easy it makes life for them. So he comes back real excited to friend A and tells him all about this concept. And friend A says, surprisingly, you're crazy. we got a great business here. Let's just keep hauling buckets. Friend B says, you know what? I'm not satisfied. I've seen a better way. I'm going to do this. So he takes his time. He builds an investment. And this is where that quote came from that we started with. Some people just see a rock pile with what I'm going to tell you. They like the bucket hauling idea. If that's you, that's fantastic. Go for it. There's not a lot of people that can haul buckets all day long for their entire career. If you're one of them, you're guaranteed to make good money. I'm not one of them. Okay? I've done those jobs through college where I had to do door-to-door -door sales and telemarketing. I've done all of that type of stuff. I don't want to build a career around that. So let me just define what bucket hauling is in the real estate industry. It's the smile and dial campaigns. Okay? Building it by the numbers. Anybody can do that. It doesn't matter how smooth a talker you are. If you get on the phone for four hours a day, you're going to make money. Okay? You can call out of the phone book. Literally, I've seen people do it. Call out of the phone book. You don't need a lead generation system. If you're calling for four hours a day just through sheer volume, you're going to run into people that need business. And you can do that. But I can't. I mean, I could if I was starving, but I certainly don't want to build a lifestyle around being on the phone for four hours a day. That would be very miserable for me. It wouldn't be fun. And so that's the bucket hauling concept. The pipeline concept is something that I'm going to teach you today. However, as we're building our pipeline, quite often we're hauling buckets on the side. We're doing the for sale by owner calls. We're working our farm area, which is one of the things we're going to talk about soon. Um, we're doing these types of things because we've got to pay the bills and for a lot of us we don't have a very big sphere of influence yet. And so we haul buckets to build up the people that we know. We do our phone calls. I'm not saying bucket hauling is bad. It's part of the business but for me I want it to be a short-term part of the business not my long-term plan. Okay, so Let's talk about our two pipelines that we have available to us here at Equity. Number one is our real estate practice, okay, and that's what we're going to spend the bulk of our time on today. The second one is realtor recruiting, and this is kind of a unique thing for Equity Real Estate. Is we've got a great company, we're expanding rapidly across the country, and if you referred another agent to Equity, you're doing them a favor because in most cases they're going to make more money with us because we're just less expensive than the competition. But hopefully in all cases, we provide them better service. Okay, because that's what we wanted to build way back in the beginning. And I've been with the company since, the, since almost day one. I opened our first physical location. I was our first branch broker. Um, what we wanted to build was the best. And there are companies cheaper than us, but they're not better than us. And they're not cheaper than us by much, but they're definitely not better than us. And so as you share this opportunity with uh, other agents and they come on board, then every time they close a transaction, $100 is direct deposited right into your account. I've had agents that are probably over $30,000 now with what they've earned from this program. 
they pay their car payment. Some of them are close enough to paying their house payment with this each month. Okay, If you stay with it long enough, and the nice thing is we have a very low turnover ratio. For a real estate company, very few people join us and then leave again. It's not a revolving door like so many companies are because there really is nothing better out there. We've got a great program here. So if you know people that are not happy with a 30 or 40 percent commission split, something like that, um, or they're not happy with the level of service that they're getting from their, their broker, again, we try to have great people, great brokers, great payroll, great support. We try to have all of those things, and we're constantly working on those to make it better. Great way to build your business, though, and another pipeline that you can do on the site. And it comes very simply, opening your mouth, saying, hey, by the way, who do you work for? What kind of splits do they have? you got to give my broker a call. Or would you mind if my broker gave you a call? I think you might be interested in equity. Okay, some simple ways that you can build that. Let's get on and talk about our pipeline. Our sphere of influence, by definition, consists of everybody that we know and interact with as a part of our normal life. I've trained agents personally, coached agents individually, and had some that flat out said, I will not work with family and friends. People from church, absolutely not. I'm not going to leverage my personal relationship to make money. My relationship with these people is more important. And I applaud that. However, the idea comes from a lack of understanding of the correct way to handle this. So when we talk about our sphere of influence and working with our sphere of influence, a lot of us, and I don't know if it's just Utah, it seems like we're Mecca for um, network marketing companies, but a lot of us, the only time we've learned anything about marketing to our sphere of influence was maybe from a network market, marketing company. Call up your friends and family, have them buy something that's expensive, and, and by the way, I'm not slamming network marketing companies. If you're a part of one, fantastic, good for you. I've been in the past, that's fine. But I don't like their training for the most part. I've never really seen anybody out of all the, and again, this is Mecca here. We've seen lots and lots of network marketing uh, opportunities is what they're called over here. Um, but I've never seen good training on it. It's all about leveraging that personal relationship to make money off of your friends and family. And so when this agent said to me, I'm not going to do that with real estate, I could understand, but I wanted her to start thinking differently. If you feel that same way, hopefully today you can start thinking differently as well. Because your sphere of influence should include family and friends, church acquaintances, school acquaintances, everybody out there. But there's a way to go about it, and it's not by leveraging your relationship. First of all, understand that this is vitally important. This is an old statistic I've had on my training program for, I don't know, eight years. However, it's actually gone up over the years. It's gotten higher. As information transfer becomes easier and easier, we're, we've got things available on Facebook and, and mass email or whatever, information overload has become a problem. People don't know who to trust. They don't know who they should work with. And so almost everybody, three quarters of people say they would rather work with somebody that they already know and trust. Now when I saw this, it really stood out to me that language, know and trust. And I thought, my family knows me really well, but sometimes they don't hire me. They know that I'm trustworthy. You know, I'm a good guy. I'm not going to lie and cheat. So what do those two things mean? And I assigned my own meaning to them that hopefully you guys can think a little bit about this week in your own business, but I think people need to know us personally, so have kind of a personal relationship there, and trust us professionally. And quite often, we don't nurture both of those. For example, with my family, they know me personally. I'm a good guy. I'm not going to lie, cheat, or steal to them, but do they trust me professionally? Do they know that I'm great at my job? Have I done anything to convince them of that? Do they get any marketing materials? Or do when, when we get together for family reunions, do, do I just tell them about how hard the job is and these crazy clients that I've got? Do they see anything from me that would convince them that I'm the best real estate agent in the world, regardless of my family relationship with them? Do they see anything to convince them of that? 
Do my neighbors see that? And for most of us, the answer is a resounding no. They don't. They never see stuff like that. We're leveraging a relationship there. So today, what we're going to talk about primarily is how to develop those two facets. If it's a client, they see us professionally all the time. That's all they see us at. However, there's a lot of clients out there where we close the deal and a couple years later they get a job promotion, have another kid, and they need to move, and they don't call you back. Okay? If you called them, sure they'd work with you. They were happy with you professionally. But another agent called him and he seemed to be a professional as well. So the only advantage that we have there is if we can help those people know us personally. If they feel like we're personal friends and they trust me professionally, it doesn't matter who the next slick agent is that walks on their door or sends them a postcard or cold calls them on the phone. It doesn't matter because my relationship trumps theirs. The personal relationship that we've built and the professional trust is going to trump somebody that's just got professional trust because of his slick marketing pieces. Okay, So that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, when we're talking with our sphere of influence, we need to make it part of our business, but not all of our business. And there's two reasons for this. And I need to work on my slides because I don't like the, how the blue cuts it off. But anyways, number one, when I only work with friends and family, which a lot of new agents just do, and I have a bad experience with them, or maybe they don't hire me, that rejection can be crushing. <laughs> it's really sad when mom fires you, you know? So if you're constantly working with other people, and again, if you have your eyes focused on acquiring new business in your pipeline, if it's always focused forward, rejection is handled much easier because you always have replacement business to fill in the gaps, all right? If you're only working with friends and family, you kind of doubt your ability as well. Did they just hire me because I'm their friend? So if you're constantly working with other people, again, eyes focused forward on talking with new people, maybe some bucket hauling, then you practice your scripts, you practice your skills in talking to new people and building relationships with people, and that will build your confidence in yourself as well. And your confidence shines forth in everything that you do. It affects your presentations, it affects whether or not they decide to sign with you, and it affects how they receive your counsel as you're showing them homes and they're deciding whether or not they want to buy something or what price they should list at. Confidence is a big factor, and you only build that by practicing, for the most part, outside of your sphere of influence. And the third reason here is your sphere of influence needs to grow. For most of us, when we make a list of everybody that we know, it's a fairly short list, less than 100 people. And we want to grow that up to a much more sizable number so that we can have, at least for me, I much more enjoy business with friends than cold calling leads off of the internet. If I have somebody call me up and say, hey, you remember me? My brother's buying a home and I gave him your name, said you were awesome. He's expecting your phone call right now. I call up his brother and he says, oh yeah, John said to expect a call from you. Let's meet tomorrow. I meet with him. He's already signed the paperwork. I hardly have to do a presentation, but of course I'm going to because that's the highest level of service I can provide, right? We talked about this last couple of weeks. So I'm going to give them my presentation. They're going to realize the high level of service that I provide. They're going to be more likely to refer me to their own friends. I like doing business that way. When people call up saying, I'm ready to buy a home, I want to make an offer, help me out. That's so much easier than pounding the phones all day long. So we want to build our sphere of influence so that we can have enough people in there that we can have consistent closings each month based off of that group. <clears throat> Step number one, your sphere of influence needs to know that you're a realtor. How many times have we heard this from neighbors or friends where we see on Facebook they're selling their house and we're offended? You know, maybe a sign goes up in the yard right next door to us. And it's offensive and it hurts our feelings. And so we go on an innocent walk around the block and they happen to be out there talking. We're like, so I noticed your signs up in the yard. Did you know I was a realtor? And they say, oh, I had no idea. I would have loved to have hired you. I hear this all the time from agents. I've heard it myself. Okay, we're all guilty of this type of thing. 
And this is where we, we, we want to fix this. We want to patch the holes. Step number one, send our sphere of influence an introductory letter telling, that's supposed to be an, not and, an intro letter telling them about either A, your new job. If you're a brand new agent, you can be excited about it. Hey, I'm excited. I got my new job. I'm, there's all these great services I can do now for you. If you've been in the market for a long time, hey, you know me, I've been a realtor for a long time. There's been some crazy things happening in our market, and I felt like I needed to have better contact with people. A couple rules of thumb here. Keep it simple, keep it in their interest, and don't ask for business here. And I know that flies in the face of a lot of popular trainers out there that are always saying, close, close, close. Never miss an opportunity to close. But I don't know about you, but I hate that. If somebody's constantly using closing techniques on me, it really pisses me off. And it, it's glaring to me when somebody's using a closing script. Okay, I don't care who it is. I was looking, I'm a member of a group online, uh, a Facebook group called Fearless Agents. And I, I admire these people. They're more of the smile and dial campaign type of people, but they've got a specific script that they use every time. And some guy posted on there last night, he says, I went out to this for sale by owner and I used this script and the guy rolled his eyes because he looked like he'd seen the script 20 times before and he probably has. Um, and he said, I just felt dumb. You know what? I felt that way when I started too. I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like being on the receiving end of that. I don't like being on the giving end of that. So how many of you guys by raise of hands, and again, you don't raise your hand at your chair, but click on the little webinar dashboard button that looks like a hand with an arrow on it. How many of you have not heard from a friend in, let's say, at least a year, and all of a sudden you get a phone call from them, and within the first 30 seconds, they bring up business. Maybe the script that they use is something like this. Hey, I'm really excited to talk to you. I haven't talked to you for a long time. I don't have a lot of time today but I have this great opportunity and you popped into my mind. How many of you guys have ever heard a script like that? I'd like you to raise your hands and then if you would, please type in the question panel and let me know how you felt when A, you saw their number on the phone, okay, and B, how did you feel when all of a sudden they're marketing to you immediately out of the gate? And I'm going to wait a while for you guys to give me your, your thoughts on this because I want to read that out loud so that you guys know it's not just me that feels this way. Now, some of you guys may be fine with it because different strokes for different folks. We all think and react differently. So one just typed in very briefly, I felt good, then felt bad. <laughs> See what else you guys have to say about it. I'll tell you a story of one I had. I was excited. I hadn't heard from the guy for 10 years. And he calls me, again, a network marketing business, and it instantly pissed me off. I was angry, actually, because I was so excited to talk to him. I had been one, a part of a group of friends that I'd been really close to in high school, hadn't heard from him in 10 years, and he's marketing to me. And it pissed me off. I was actually angry. Another person typed in, they felt annoyed. Another one said they wanted to get off the phone quickly, even though they are a good friend. Guys, this isn't just me, all right? Uh, another one said, I felt like just a dollar sign to them, and since we had not talked for a while, it felt wrong. So I would encourage you, by the way, thank you for those that participated with that. I would encourage you to not be that person, okay? Another person typed in, A, I was surprised to hear from this person that I was never particularly close with, and be annoyed to hear yet another MLM pitch. What is it with Utah? <laughs> I tell you, it's Mecca here. We like this stuff. Um, anyways, when you're building a relationship with somebody, if you don't have, let's put it this way, a lot of you guys have probably heard this analogy. It comes from a different book. Again, I can't remember which one, but uh, it talks about relationships between uh, husband and wife, okay? So let's say that, you know, I'm married. I'm obviously, if you know me at all, I'm going to do dumb things that's going to piss my wife off, all right? And he calls these a 
withdrawal, just like a bank account. It's an emotional withdrawal. And so I have to have, just like a bank account, enough deposits to cover the withdrawals before I start bouncing checks. So I've got to do deposits. I've got to treat her kindly. I've got to tell her I love her. I've got to take good care of her. I've got to be respectful. I've got to teach the kids respect. If I'm doing all of these things, then I've got a lot of deposits. And then when I do a couple dumb things, I can take a withdrawal. It doesn't bounce checks for me in my relationship. I think the same thing needs to apply to us here as real estate agents. If you're calling your neighbors, maybe you don't have a close relationship with them, even though they're in your neighborhood. I know I don't have a close relationship with all of my neighbors. Um, build that up a little bit first. If you're calling a friend from four years ago that you haven't seen in four years, catch up with them first. Show them that you care. Don't ask for business with this initial contact because it burns bridges and it pisses people off. Okay? So, step number two, now everybody knows you're a real estate agent. Oh, by the way, I've got a little handout there. I'm not sure if I had mentioned that. Um, there's a little handout associated with this. One of my agents up in Cash Valley, this was a number of years ago, put together that uh, David Bates new business letter. I asked him if I could share it and he said fine. So uh, if you guys want to see that kind of as a sample, it's fun. Now at the bottom he says, hey, if you do need help with a, as, as a seller, I can give you a free market analysis. Again, that's in their best interest. It's not a sales pitch, at least in my mind. But he makes it fun. You know, it's a fun way to introduce himself or reintroduce himself as a real estate agent to his friends or neighbors. Okay, step number two, your sphere needs to benefit from this fact. And by the way, that new business letter, you can just download that directly from this webinar. You don't need to ask me for it later, okay? So how does your sphere benefit from the fact that you're a real estate agent? Here's our contact plan for our sphere of influence. Now, you could do more than this, but if you stick to something pretty close to this, I think it's going to serve you really well. First of all, a newsletter every month. In your newsletter, you can both of those birds, people knowing you personally and trusting you professionally. What I would highly encourage you not to do is use a form newsletter. There are several out there. There's subscriptions. Equity provides you with one. It's a form newsletter. doesn't have anything personal. Take that form newsletter if you want to use it, the one that Equity gives you, and uh, edit it. It's, it's fully editable. Take the very first article out or move it somewhere else and put something in there personal about you. The very first article needs to be personal about you. And it can be brief. You don't have to be super open if you're kind of a closed person. If you're not, tell whatever you want to. But something a little bit engaging. And it can be simple stuff. I've got a question typed in here. Hold on. Uh, somebody said we just need to get into the habit of using these as part of our systems. And I couldn't agree more. This is exactly what I'm encouraging you to do is have this as a system. Now, if you want to use that newsletter that Equity provides, again, edit it. Other tools that we have for you, Sharper Agent, typically $40 a month subscription. We provide it to you at $20 a month. They have newsletters in there as well. And again, you can edit those or you can use a template. Don't use the template. If any of you get newsletters from lenders, which most of you probably do on a weekly basis or something with an update on the market or interest rates or something, those don't deepen the relationship. And I've told lenders over and over and over, don't even bother to send this stuff to me. It does nothing for you. Yes, it puts your name in front of me. Bammer. If anything, it actually degrades the relationship, in my opinion. Okay? So don't be one of those. Send a newsletter out. You can feature your listings in there. You can say, hey, I've got buyers that are looking for something like this. If your newsletter goes out to enough people, I think I've got mine going out to about 800 people now. But if it goes out to enough people, that's some great exposure for you. And it's great for them to see, I think one of the biggest responses I ever got was from a Halloween picture I took with me and my kids dressed up for Halloween. Had nothing to do with real estate. That first article anyways. It was all personal. Here's me and my kids. We're going trick-or-treating. I got a lot of responses back. I engaged a lot of people with that. 
If you just send out market information, you'll engage almost nobody. So, personal article. You can also include some professional articles, maybe some statistics. You can get statistics from your MLS. You get them from Realtor.com. Lots of stuff for you, lots of material. You can copy and paste out of that newsletter that Equity provides for you on the Elevate site. So have a personal article and a professional article. Then when your family sees that, they already know you personally, but they start to respect you as a professional as well. Okay? Every month, have that newsletter go out. That's 12 of your contacts already done. Next, four phone calls. Every quarter, have some kind of personal contact. Now you can do phone calls, you can do a pop by where you just drop by and visit them. You have, you, if you're a fan of Buffini, which uh, I'm a certified Buffini mentor as well, but he talks about this a lot, where you go get something cheap, you know, maybe a, buy 40 or 50 ice cream scoops for a buck a piece or something, and just drop by on National Pie Day and say, hey, National Pie Day is coming up, and what goes better with pie than ice cream, and I was thinking of you. You know, something like that. Some kind of personal contact that you have with people. Get into the habit of doing this on a regular basis. So if you've got a database of 500 people, you can't do that one day of the quarter. All of a sudden just pound out 500 calls. This is something that needs to be happening consistently. Six or seven contacts a day, every day, with people that you know, building and deepening that relationship. Now, if you're using a contact management software, that, like I'm using, and I'll give you a name for one later on, I look at there, I pull up the software as I make those calls, I realize I don't have their spouse's name in there. I don't have their kid's name in there. So if they mention something, you know, I ask them, hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, great, we're exhausted, we just took a trip to Disneyland uh, for our kid's birthday or our kid's graduation or something like that. Oh yeah, which kid was that? I can make a quick note in there without sounding like I'm the CIA interrogating them or something. I can make a quick note, and then when I call them a couple months later, hey, how's Jennifer doing? You know, after she's done with high school now, is she off to college? What's going on? Those kind of things, when people remember your kids' names, it stands out. You know, that's kind of cool that people would take the time to care about my kids. So, gather information. Make it a personal building time. Other things that you can say on these phone calls, because the number one reason I think people don't make calls is they don't know what to say. Look at local holidays. You know, pull up your big calendar and see what's going on. Call them up and say, "Hey, did you have, a, did you do anything fun this past Memorial Day weekend?" You know, just something to touch base. If you don't have a relationship where you can do things like that, you know, where you can ask them about their weekend, maybe it's a client or something, then you can call them up. Um, I send out a little postcard, so I could call them and say, "Hey." Um, did you get that free postcard that I sent you for an ice cream at, let's see, I've got it right here on my desk, at Fars Fresh. And I can see if I've got it. If they didn't get it, well, let me get your address updated. And then I can start a conversation with something like that. So you can use lots of different things to start a conversation. And as you feel like your relationship is getting a little, little bit better, well, hopefully they ask you, how are you doing? You know, if you say, hey, it's been a little while since we've talked. I wanted to catch up. Maybe it's one of those friends that's four or five years since you've contacted them. Say, hey, man, it's been a long time since we've talked. I was just thinking about you today. Tell me what's going on with your life. Inevitably, they're going to ask you what's going on with yours. This is where you can build up real estate. But again, not a sales pitch because those stand out. So you know what? I'm actually in real estate. I'm loving it. We're having a great year. And I keep it really busy. You know, if, if you know anybody that's buying or selling real estate, send them my name. That, you know, that's not a sales pitch there. It doesn't come across that that was the intent of your, of your whole phone call. And yes, this does take a little bit of time to patch relationships up that you've neglected. As you get going and as you have better relationships with people, sometimes you can make these calls fairly quickly. And, and just it's more of a maintaining thing rather than a doctoring and, and repairing type thing. Uh, next, semi-annual market reports. Again, you can get these from the division, from Realtor.com, a lot of different resources that we have available for free, or the MLS, uh, they'll provide us with market reports. If you've got a farm area, you can do it specific to just that neighborhood, or you can do it specific to the county, whatever it is that you think is a good one for your 
group. And these just convince people, hey, I'm dealing with a real pro here. I always get my semi-annual market report. You can make it a quarterly report, you can make it a monthly report, whatever you want to do, but at least two semi-annual market reports. That's specifically for the professional side. You're getting them to trust you as a professional. Next, a couple just purely nice cards, just because you care about people. And hopefully as you do this, you learn to be better at caring about people. But if you send them a card on their birthday or you send them a card for Christmas or their anniversary, you had better not put in your tagline that says, by the way, the highest compliment I can get is a referral from a friend. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen it. I've seen it on my birthday card. And I think, well, I really shouldn't say online what I think, okay? <laughs> because it's not nice. They're seriously going to market to me on my birthday? That's what this is about? They're going to include some of their business cards in my birthday card? I've seen it, and it's retarded to me. That is insane. Don't do that stuff. Same thing on Christmas. Take a break for a little while from the marketing and shoving this down people's throat and just care about people. And I'm getting a little preachy here, so I'll back off a little bit. But it's okay to just care about people without constantly marketing. That's how we build relationships. It's how we make the deposit. If every deposit is a backhanded withdrawal, it's not a real deposit. Okay? If you add these up, you get about 20 contacts a year. Now, I wanted to show you a simple way to send cards. And ironically, this is a network marketing business. Um, I don't use it for that. I just, I'm a subscriber. If you want to use it as a business, knock yourself out. That's fine. But I wanted to give you an example. Okay? Um, first of all, on Christmas, the reason why I come up with this idea is on Christmas, I would get postcards from title companies. Okay? And everybody would scribble their name in. I just imagine these poor people, you know, the entire office, 10 people sitting around the board uh, the the big table just signing their little life away you know sending out thousands of these cards and it means nothing to me I get a postcard with 10 people's signature just scribbled on there because their hands about to die and fall off they've been doing so many of them I get those I don't I don't put those out I don't hang those up on my fridge I don't set it on my mantle there was no care or thought put into that so if that's your practice my opinion is you don't need to send me one because it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know if anybody else out there is like that, but that means nothing to me because there was no care put into it. Okay? I did something like this, and I saw this up on people's homes for almost a year. A little happy Valentine's Day thing, and sendoutcards.com. You can go and figure out how to use it for yourself. I honestly, I'm, I could probably figure it out, but my assistant does a lot of this for me. Um, so I got a little picture of my family. Uh, I was able to do the border in there and, and put in the little thought bubbles and you know my and I just did something that I thought was particular for my kids. So my wife's saying she's happy, my girls are you're so sweet and I love you and my little boy says I just tutor and I'm just thinking smile damn it so we can get this thing over with and move on. Uh, I think I put darn it in there though because I sent it to my mother in law and uh, didn't want to get judged too harshly. So anyways, it's kind of fun. And it meant a little bit and it was personal. And that kind of stuff, I at least would hold on to a little bit. Cost me, I don't know, just over a buck. So not too much more than I would spend to buy a card at Walmart and send them out. So if your sphere is benefiting from the fact that now they know a real estate agent, he's a great guy, he's knowledgeable, or gal, excuse me, and they're knowledgeable about the business, they're always in touch, I know how to reach them. There's lots of good things that start to come your way they start to automatically refer you business. So that's the simple recipe right there. One, two, three. Number one, they need to know you're an agent. Don't be a secret agent any longer. Number two, be a genuine good person. Be a better friend, not just a better marketer. Be an actual better friend so that they can benefit from the fact that they know you. And number three, they'll naturally refer you. Here's your magic numbers to take with you for the day. I quit giving out business cards a long time ago. I haven't printed them up for six or eight years. I don't have any on me. I don't have any in my desk. I don't have any in my car. I got into the habit of taking control of my business. And I'm not necessarily telling you go throw your business cards away. Okay? There's times I've thought it would be nice to have a card right now. However, what I needed to force myself to do was to be brave. 
and it was so easy to just give my card and pretend that somehow that would magically yield business. But I found that it doesn't, and I need to quit banking on luck to get closings. I need to be a proactive person. And so instead, I started to pay attention to the people that I talk with each day, and I started to try to get their information. And if I focus really hard, I could talk to two people a day and add their information to my database. And you'll actually be surprised at how easy this gets. Start with people that you know. Get those numbers into your database. If you did this every week for one year, that's 10 people a year, a week, or 10 people a week times 52 weeks, you had a database of 500 people. Everybody I know with a database that's active of over 500 people are closing a significant volume. Okay? If you have, this is a study that I saw, 20 high quality contacts per person could yield up to a 10% referral rate, up to 52 transactions a year if you're doing it right. Okay? Now, this can be a challenge to do this right. It takes time every day. It takes energy to go out and visit with people. It takes time to put together some of these things. But my question here at the bottom is, if you're not doing these things right now, what are you doing that's getting you that same volume of business? Because if it's not, if it's generating you three or four things of business by some other form of marketing that you're doing, then maybe you should consider something that gets you 50 deals instead of three or four deals. All right, I've got a question typed in. What do you get to, uh, what do you say to get the phone number and email of these people? Just as you're talking to people, um, like if, let's say that it's somebody that I already know, all right, and we're having a conversation, I can say, you know what, I would actually, I try really hard to provide something of value every month to my friends. Would you mind if I got your email address and added you to that list? I promise I don't ever send spam. And you'll just get something that will have valuable information for you. Um, it'll be something simple every month. You can kind of be aware of what's going on. And I'll send you, you know, I'll, people like to know what sales are going on in their neighborhood. I'll give you a summary of that every few, every few months as well. Is that okay if I get your email address? And most people will say sure. Um, if they know that they're going to get some quality coming to them, then most people will do that. Uh, and usually I'll just put them right in my phone or something like that and then add them into my contact management system later on. So here's your homework assignment. Get a contact management software. If you're going to have 500 people in your database, unless you're a genius level savant, uh, you're going to need some help. Uh, I like realtyjuggler.com. You can go there. They'll give you three months free, no questions asked. Uh, if you like the program and you sign up, they're only 100 bucks a year, which compared to other software programs, that's very inexpensive. If you put down my email address, the broker Eric Lee at gmail.com, they'll give you another two months free. Um, what I would encourage you to do is your homework. Your current contacts add 10 names and numbers a day. Don't use this as an excuse to not get out and talk to new people. Okay, if you're doing data entry, set aside a time, maybe one hour, get 10 names, numbers, all the information that you have, load it in there. Do that every day. Add, get into the habit of quit giving out your business card and start gathering information. If you're talking to somebody and they say, oh yeah, we were thinking of buying a home. Don't just give me a card and say, well, give me a call sometime. Instead say, well, let me get your name and number. I'll give you a call a little bit later and set a time. I can come over to your house and I've got a little 30-minute buyer presentation. You'll love it. Great information about the whole process, whether you use me or not as an agent. I'd love to share this information with you. It'll come in real handy. Now you've got the information. Now you're in charge. And it's not a roll of the dice whether or not they'll call you back. And by the way, they won't call you back. So just that's the sneak preview of the future if you give out your business card. Maybe one or two in a thousand actually are proactive enough to call you. So um, take the control away from them, recapture it for yourself. And your homework assignment would be this week, send out your newsletter to your sphere of influence. Use that as a forum to start staying in contact with them. Guys, thanks for your time today. I appreciate you joining me. Again, questions, comments, feedback, you can email me at brokerericlee at gmail.com. Some of you had typed in, where do we go again to revisit this training? Go to YouTube, type in Elite Agent Training. All right? Thanks again. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you all online next week. Bye-bye.